back to Ground Zero Salem. I'm Pat. So, on this nice, chilly October Saturday afternoon, I figured I'd explore a topic that I don't think has really been discussed um, in the VC, as it were, yet. And it's been a topic that's been kind of floating around my brain more recently the past couple of months, but I've kind of had back there for the past decade or so. Um, when all this interest in old school death metal started to kind of spark up again about 10 years ago, uh, and the whole proliferation of all kinds of old demos started to spread like wildfire across the internet via blogs and uploads on message boards and stuff like that, I noticed that there were some really, really great bands that I'd never heard of, that I was just discovering, um, didn't come across with my brief tenure during uh, the 90s, kind of experimenting with tape trading, which I didn't do much. And uh, a lot of these bands had, ranging from silly to straight up terrible names, and the common thread with a bunch of these bands, there's not a ton, I'm only discussing four here, a major thread with all of them is they were all really good. So I've picked out four. There's probably more. Um, I was gonna include Numskull, but I've already discussed them extensively. And all they, although they went to uh, more of a death metal direction later, they were more of kind of a brutal thrash metal kind of band. It's also gonna talk about California Love from California, who are kind of a PV, grindcore, hardcore kind of band, who are great, by the way. Um, be sure to scope them out if you like grind and that sort of thing. But there was more of a tongue-in-cheek, kind of deliberate, kind of ironic thing with their, their naming. Um, whereas I think most of these bands that I'm about to talk about were blissfully unaware that they had kind of silly names. Um, <laughs> some of the names I like better than others. Uh, a few of these, I'm wondering if it's a language barrier thing. You know, two of the bands are German. Two of the bands are from the Midwest. So without further ado, let's get into what we're listening to in the background here. This is a double LP collection of a German band called Are You Dead? Question mark. Letter R, letter U, dead? Um, if they ever reform and have legal issues due to one of the members, they can be called Are You Dead LOL or something like that. Not the best joke. I could do better. Whatever. This band's incredible. Um, despite their very silly name that sounds like a text message from a 13-year-old, or maybe your aunt, uh, this is some of the best, best death metal of the era, really. I mean, that's a hyperbolic statement. A lot of the death metal of the early 90s is really good, but I can't help but think if maybe these guys had a different name. Um, they might have done something differently. Although I, I feel like they never... This semi... It's not a discography, this compilation of uh, demo stuff and 7 inches and EPs might also be indicative that they didn't quite have their stuff together to record a full length, which they never did. Uh, at any rate, songwriting is top notch. Um, they're from Germany and you can tell there's a certain thickened up, uh, more death metal approach to that Teutonic riffing style from like early Creator and Sodom like that going on, counterbalanced with a really great traditional doom quality to it. You might start to hear that simmering in the background. There's some great crawling, foreboding doom passages. The Call to Mind Candle Mass and other greats of, uh, of that genre. It's a fantastic collection. I also have um, this weird bootleg CD that I don't even know if it was distributed. It ended up in my hands because I worked at a, a record store from 2009 to 2011 called Newberry Comics. And some guy just gave this to my boss. My boss was a long-haired metalhead guy, and this customer came in and figured he'd like this. And Nick gave it to me. Boss's name was Nick. Uh, just telling me, uh, you know, I don't collect CDs. This sounds cool, but, you know, rip it for me or whatever. And this is a, 
one of their promos in entirety from 1992. I think it's just titled Promo 92. And it's got six songs. This is when they started to get way more into the doom realm. There's some pretty long songs on here. The, uh, the title track, The Tombs Have Not Been Sealed. This guy who put this out went to the trouble of titling it The Tombs Have Not Been Sealed. Is a like an eight or nine minute Doom Death epic, and I as popular as Doom Death has gotten, thanks to Dark Descent, etc. Lately, I, I recommend scoping this band out if you're really into the whole spectral voice Adaraxi thing. Um, I wouldn't say this band really sounds like those bands at all, different influences and whatnot, but it certainly scratches that itch, especially with the older bands too, like Autopsy and Asphyx, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, not super guttural kind of vocals, you know, kind of more slightly growled, shouting, early death metal kind of stuff, if you can't hear it in the background. Um, maybe a degree of separation from Martin Van Duren kind of shit, but it's, uh, man, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, my only complaint about this Dead But Alive compilation that we're listening to right now, which came out on Iron Pegasus in 2013, it's a beautiful gatefold, great layout, great presentation. It's got an awesome timeline of the band, as you can see there, through the years, lyrics. Uh, just black vinyl on this one. It probably came out on some colors, I don't know. Cool center labels. Uh, my main complaint about it is it doesn't say what releases each song are from. And I think that information is probably easily obtainable if I get onto Metal Archives or whatever, but it'd be nice to have it right in front of me. This band featured Uli from uh, Poison, and they either, even do uh, Sphinx by Poison. That's Poison Germany, of course. And uh, another member whose name escapes me went on to be in Flesh Crawl right before they recorded um, Descent into the Absurd. So there's a good pedigree there, and just top-notch shit, just well-written. Uh, we'll stay in Germany for now. This band I don't really know a ton about as far as members going on to other stuff or how long they were around. I think this came out also 92, 93. This is Jumpin' Jesus. Yep, Jumpin' Jesus. With the art of crucifying, uh, this re-release reissue on Vic Records also includes the Jumpin' Jesus demo from 1990. And this is such a fun mix of styles. Um, I'd say equally European and um, kind of East Coast American, like brutal suffo slash uh, cannibal corpse kind of stuff going on. Um, technical in the sense that it's not wanky or, or trying to show off how many scales they can rip, that kind of thing, but somewhat complicated arrangements to the points where it gets a little, a little dizzying here and there as far as uh, riff salad. And uh, great guttural vocals, but not quite in the realm of anything unintelligible yet, you know? Like Chris Barnes, Eaten Back to Life era, or like Human Waste, Suffocation, you can make out some words here and there, you know, but pretty deep. Um, some great no nods to thrash, but still looking forward into death metal there as far as the riff styles go. And uh, some great, like, really mellow acoustic kind of mood building parts here and there, intros, outros, that sort of thing. Uh, just, just a really well put together recording. German band, don't know what they went on to after this, and I'm not sure how long, how long they were around for. This is from, like I said, early to mid 90s though. But yeah, fucking great. You know, nice little, nice, decent presentation there blood splattered members in there doesn't really look like yeah really hard to read small red print <laughs> bio short bio 
So maybe if I actually read that, I'd know more. Let's say Lobby. Uh, moving on to America. We've got Demented Ted. Promises and Pure. All these bands I came across some years ago. Message boards, blogs, that sort of thing. And uh, Demented Ted were on a pretty big label. They were on uh, Pavement, which is what this originally came out on. This was reissued on Repulsive Echo. Licensed from Pavement. It says right there. And to my knowledge, this is the only full length they did. I think they did a demo or two previous to this. And again, very technically adept, but not wanky. Uh, suit, you know, kind of more on the thrashy side than the previous records I just discussed. I'm gonna say, you know, if you like Human by Death, if you like early Pestilence, the first two or three Pestilence records, it's kind of along there. There's some nice jarring Floridian kind of things going on with it. Like, I'm thinking Morbid Angel, Nocturnus, like, weird shifts in the the timing of the riffs and stuff like that, that kind of spiraling, churning weirdness going on. Um, raspy, you know, kind of mid-range death metal vocals being belted out, being vomited forth, if you want. Um, not too much else to say about this. Very, uh, very little to complain about. It's a good record. I, again, me being kind of a nitpicker with the drum sounds, this has that kind of drum sound where they were starting to learn how to gate the, uh, the double bass. It doesn't sound like a full-on typewriter shit yet, but the, all the double bass hits all sound remarkably similar. Um, and weirdly still kind of organic and like drums, but you can tell there's there's something going on with some kind of triggering there. And that sticks in my craw a little bit, but that's really about it. Um, other than that, it's it's a 8 or 9 out of 10 banger, and it's worth exploring. Um, click the links at the bottom. eyes out. We got Dr. Shrinker. This is Grotesque Wedlock compiling their three studio demos. I think they've got some practice stuff on the LPs. Uh, the Wedding the Grotesque demo, the Eponym demo, and the Recognition demo. And then years later they reformed and put out their first proper album in uh, 2015, looks like. Contorted Dioramic Palette. This came out on Dread Records. Uh, Dr. Shrinker were from Milwaukee, who had an incredibly underrated scene, um, along with Chicago. I feel like those two towns, as far as early death metal goes, never really got their due that they should, along with, you know, with Florida and California and New York and everything. Um, Demented Ted was from Chicago, by the way. Not sure if I mentioned that. Did now. So, if you want to see me gush at length about Dr. Shrinker, I'll leave a link for my reviews of the uh, of the compilations that came out on Nuclear War Now last year. Two beautiful gatefold double LPs. Um, as for right now, I'll keep it sharp and concise, just like Dr. Shrinker's music. Um, just a great example of early raw death metal, you know, one step away from maybe repulsion and slaughter into a more technical kind of territory. You can see why Jeff Walker wanted to put out um, their debut full-length that never happened on Necrosis Records. Uh, you can see there are kind of kindred spirits and sickness in medical terminology, but again, Dr. Shrinker didn't have nearly as much of a grind thing going on as any of the aforementioned. There was more of a thrashy, but way sicker kind of bass to the music, like really snotty, vomited vocals, you could tell. There was a lineage coming from Cryptic Slaughter and the Accused, but there was something way more, even more demented going on with the, with the vocal department there. And I just fucking love Dr. Shrinker.
The name comes from uh, a weird children's show that was a short, I think it was crammed in the middle of another children's show in between, like it was a, a little interlude thing um, in the 1970s, and it was uh, a Seals and Marty Crofts joint, and um, they did H.R. Puffin stuff and all that, that really trippy, scary, drug-addled <coughs> children's programming that probably wouldn't happen nowadays. But Dr. Shrinker was a bad guy who shrunk people. And, you know, all these bands have really silly names. Dr. Shrinker is really the only one that I like. Because it just, it's goofy, but what the fuck does that mean? It's got sort of just a weird ring to it. I find it a little unsettling, and uh, I like that about it. So, that's all of it. Um, four bands, real quick. I am going to throw some samples in to kind of flesh this out so you can, you know, enjoy this stuff. <laughs> and be forced to listen to it against your will. So, you're welcome. I'll be back soon. Let me talk about some more hardcore. Been, been getting into the NYHC even deeper than usual lately, so that'll be a treat for me. Bye.